the what is outcome based education i use that term explore because uh, that uh, doesn't mean that you don't have any idea because i know that we are into this outcome based education and uh, this is an attempt to make some more reflections into uh, what we know and uh, a great platform for uh, the peer team that means uh, all the teachers are uh, working with this outcome based education in their own subjects so that they could collaborate uh, and uh, so that we can enrich our uh, our knowledge so that is the main agenda of this ftp so uh, going into the introduction of obe so in this uh, uh, day segment we'll be going into the basic concepts of uh, ftp this uh, basic concept of this uh, outcome based uh, education so uh, let us check what is the agenda that we have what is the menu for today so let us check the agenda what we are going to do for today so uh, the first thing that we are trying we are trying to uh, bring clarity is that uh, why and what of ob that's something very important because if you want to uh, uh, explore something to the uh, deepest uh, level we should have some answers to this why why of ob and uh, the, then we will be just going through the building block of outcome based education and these are the the components that we could find in the building block that is program educational objectives graduate attributes program outcomes program uh, PSOs and POs. Pro, PO means program outcomes. PSOs means uh, program specific outcomes. Uh, course outcomes. So I think this will give you a clarity on uh, the architecture of uh, outcome based education. And then we will be going into uh, writing learning outcome. How to write a learning outcome? So you will be having a magical formula for uh, uh, for writing a clear cut of this uh, learning outcome. And this uh, formula will be uh, developed into uh, these uh, program outcomes, program specific outcomes, and course outcomes in the uh, consequent uh, tom tomorrow section. So today we'll have the basic structure. What is the magic formula for uh, writing the learning outcome? And also uh, we'll be having a quality check of a good outcome. So I'll be giving you four criteria first. So I think if I'm taking only the academical uh, progress card, academical progress card, that is probably about uh, uh, this may be about 20% failed and about 80% passed. So considering the result in an academical line, in an academical line, we can say that result is comparatively okay because uh, this is the a big portion of the students have passed and a small portion have failed. But why what made you comment on why this is bad because this is something very critical about our uh, uh, higher education system that is that is though the students have passed you can have you can see a y axis popping up and what does this y axis says that is this category this category are the students this category are the students who are not able to perform they are not able to do some task which is related to the area of study they are not a, they are not fit for job they are not able to do some task which is related to the area that have studied some live task that means they are unfit for job and is this This is a this is one uh, study result which has been taken uh, from a higher education journal, and not only that, uh, you could have uh, seen from the uh, these uh, a lot of reports are coming from uh, these uh, uh, the CEOs of uh, high profile companies that uh, uh, the students the graduate passouts are not directly employable; they are unfit for job because there is some gaps like that. So, and what does this signify? This signifies that. This signifies that a small proportion of the students, small proportion of the students are capable of uh, you know, doing the task which has been related to their uh, their area of study. So this is the fallacy of the educational system. So our educational system are more academical points, and they are not. Uh, um, there is a big gap between 
the uh, real time and uh, the real time task or uh, the projects which has been related to their area of study they are because they are lacking uh, related to a number of competencies which make them uh, fit for employability and this is uh, something which has been uh, highlighted that it is said that about 90 more than 90 percent of the students are passing out of the professional colleges are uh, not uh, directly employable they are not fit for jobs because there are recently there are a lot of uh, these uh, there are not uh, lack of uh, they are not lack of employed they are not uh, fit for job if you are able to, if you want to make them employable they have to give a lot of training for them to uh, to streamline so so what we could find is that what we could find is that the this uh, uh, outcome based education Outcome based education is uh, this is a small area, this green area that is a very small portion of the students, those who have passed are able to perform related to the task which has been related to their area of study. So the major focus of the outcome based education is to is to transform this, uh, this both this uh, blue area and this red area into this quadrant. Actually, that is the focus of the outcome-based education. So outcome-based education is uh, focusing not only on what the students are capable of knowing, but they are focusing on what the students should be capable of doing. The output, what they are be able to do is something highlighted in the outcome-based education. So the outcome-based education is a approach where we are adding a new access the new access has been considered before the uh, the traditional system of education is more academically poised and outcomes uh, based, uh, outcome based education focuses uh, uh, both on the academical academical knowledge as well as their uh, ability their competencies to fit into the life space the fit into the society fit into and there are these uh, the, the, the the different uh, uh, their uh, the industrial environment like that so that is the focus of the outcome based education so the for outcome based education is adding an additional an additional access apart from this uh, uh, merely an academical inclination into the a competency based a, a competency based education so that is uh, why that is the major focus of the outcome based education so i think it will be better to put it in this way the outcome based education is a model of education that deviates that deviates uh, from uh, the traditional focus on the traditional focus on what the institution provide to the students in favor of making the students demonstrate that they know that is the academical domain and the second axis what they are capable of doing so this is the major focus because uh, the traditional system is uh, more an input based uh, the outcome based education focuses on what is the output based uh, what the students are capable of knowing and doing that is something very important so this is the uh, the basic concept of outcome based education and this outcome based education uh, if you just analyze the basic uh, uh, principle of outcome based education it is based upon these uh, four basic principles that is clarity of focus so i i would like to put a few uh, detailing on these uh, four principles because when we are uh, developing that outcome based education this should be clear so clarity of focus means that uh, in outcome based education the output what should be the form of an output should be clear and everything should begin from the end point the end point first and planning according accordingly that is uh, the, uh, the the basic uh, principle of outcome based education i will just give you an example suppose if we are going to uh, suppose if you are going to build a house uh, and uh, you have some plans so what you are going to do is that you will be approaching an architecture to make a good design for uh, your house so you will be just detailing him that your house uh, should be of about 2000 square feet it should have four bedroom uh, i have a budget of uh, about uh, uh, 30 lakhs or 40 lakhs uh, and uh, they should be a, this uh, a proper uh, this uh, 
uh, a, a living space should be uh, very beautifully designed uh, then uh, uh, you will be uh, telling about what is your concept about the architect uh, this uh, uh, your kitchen as well as uh, what is your uh, concept about the puja room likewise you will be just detailing about that. but at this point of time this is your objective your objective that is uh, you have to make a house of uh, about uh, uh, 2000 square feet about uh, 30 to 40 lakhs uh, will be the uh, budget uh, and uh, uh, the three bedroom uh, one puja room like wise you will be having some calculations but still the output what will be the final format will not be uh, at this point of time will not be clear but instead of that if you are pointing out to a an already existing house and say that my idea of building an house is that I want an house exactly like this. That means the end point, the final format of the, the final model of the house has been already, you are pointing out this should be the final, uh, the final format of the house. I want to build an, uh, a house exactly like this. So if, a, if you are pointing something like that, then the architect will be very, 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 big. everything will be very clear. So what will be the shape of the house? Uh, what will be the specification of the rooms? Uh, how many rooms will be there? What will be the uh, location of uh, these bedrooms? Uh, and all these things will be very, very clear. And uh, we will be planning and uh, uh, this uh, will be, uh, and this architecture will be planning from the end point to the uh, initial point. So that is what uh, the outcome-based education focuses. What the students are capable of doing at the end should be pinpointed. And in order to attain that, how should you customize your curriculum will be <laughs> That is the, the outcome-based education's focus. So the clarity of focus will be there in an outcome-based uh, education. The second thing is that designing the because the end point is fixed first and then you are just planning uh, what are the activities which should be which should be streamlined so that the end point is reached so the designing starts from the end and then gradually gradually comes down comes down and what should from where should we begin will be uh, will be set from the end point so that is designing down the third one is that high expectation on the students so that is another important thing as in the previous slide we have previous uh, days uh, discussion we have uh, gone into detail that everyone can learn so there is uh, there is no that because the outcome based education says that if the things are presented in the right way the students are capable of developing so that is another important thing so the outcome based education want the entire students to attain the target so they will be fixing a target and the target means to what level they have to attain and every student should cover the target. So because everyone is capable of uh, reaching the target of uh, each uh, uh, outcomes for each outcomes, because everyone can learn if the things are presented in some uh, in a better way, uh, which has been conducive and, uh, and digestible to them. And the fourth uh, major uh, um, uh, principle is that expanded opportunities so outcome based education want a diversification a diversification of learning environment so here the teacher will be in the role of an engineer uh, whose uh, sole role is to create a learning environment which is compatible for the students for the attainment of the outcomes so diversification so uh, with respect to the different outcomes, with respect to the different content and with respect to the students, they should be able to set an, set an environment. So here the role of the teacher is, uh, is a facilitator. The student should be active and dynamic. The teacher is a facilitator which facilitate an environment where the students will be actively involved uh, so that they will be able to attain the final target. So these are the, uh, our, the major principles of an outcome-based uh, education. So ultimately, as I've shown in the uh, first uh, slide, the outcome-based education is an attempt to bring all the red area and the blue area into the green area where the students pass as well as they are able to perform well, they are employable and they have been fit to live com comfortably in the society. That is the focus of the outcome-based education. So 
probably you will be familiar with the, this uh, uh, building block of outcome based education this is the structure of an outcome based education an institution which has uh, implemented outcome based education so uh, uh, an institution will definitely will be having a vision and mission because uh, the vision and mission will define will decide the modus of operandi of an institution, how the institution will perform, what is the uh, vision will be the distant goal and mission will be the action plan. So every every institution will be having a mission and mission and uh, definitely the NAC as well as NBA is very particular that the, and it will be displayed at every nook and corner of the institutions. And uh, it is not only in the nook and corner displayed, it will be there in every activities. This, uh, this mission, the mission will be the action plan and it will be reflected in every uh, activities that we perform. So coming to this uh, outcome uh, based education, the vision and mission should be there. Then there should be an exclusive program educational objectives. In the consequence slides, we will be detailing about uh, all these things. So there will be a program educational objectives and in accordance with the, the program educational objectives, we will be we will be identifying we will be identifying the appropriate program outcomes and program specific outcomes which is in line with the program educational objectives. And so, what should come up? What should be the program educational objectives? Should be first identified, and designing downwards means. In accordance with the program educational objectives, we will be fixing what should be the program outcomes and program specific outcomes. And with respect to the program outcomes and program specific outcomes, we'll be fixing out what are the course outcomes, what are the courses that should be included into the program. So as for the attainment of these program outcomes and program specific outcomes. So when we are developing a syllabus, we have to design down, we have to design down development. That is why this arrow comes from top to down. First, identify this. On the basis of this, we have to identify this. And on the basis of this, we have to select the different courses of study. Formulation comes from top to down. And what is why this is going up? Because in an outcome-based education, you are not assessing the, the marks for each uh, subject. Instead, we are assessing to what extent, to what extent the program outcomes and program specific outcomes are attained. That is what our target. So if you want to assess this, you are not directly assessing it. You are assessing from the course level and from the assessment that you make with respect to the course level, you will be assessing what the program outcomes and program specific outcomes. So the assessment should begin from bottom to top. So this is something very important. Designing down for formulation of the curriculum and from bottom to top for the assessment, whether to identify whether the students have attained. So all these things we will be discussing in these subsequent uh, slides, uh, which is uh, which will be coming up. Now, this is a paradigm shift uh, in the focus. This is a paradigm shift in the focus of the educational system. That is uh, a traditional education system and uh, the contemporary educational system. What can you what can you comment on this uh, uh, from this uh, image? What can you say? Uh, what is the difference that you could uh, identify in the traditional and the contemporary educational system? You can put it in chat. I will just uh, make the chat. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, traditional is the traditional is what the traditional system is more academically poised that is what uh, we have uh, the same in our first slide that is academically though the students pass we are we are assessing the uh, the performance of the college we are assessing the performance of the college on the basis of the academical academical uh, attainments but now the things has changed now the things has changed we are the, the the contemporary system focuses on what is the quality of the output what is the quality of the uh, students whether they are getting a job or whether they are placed they are well placed in the society or whether they are uh, going for a higher education system that is we are taking we are, uh, we are taking follow up from the students and that follow-up will decide the quality of the institution that is the change 
that's the thing if you are uh, preparing this uh, this uh, self assessment report and uh, or self study report for nac uh, there is a very uh, uh, more thrust has been given to the output of the institution what was the result uh, as well as on uh, how many students has got placed uh, how many students has gone for higher educations these things the output is been considered more not how much uh, you have invested for uh, um, the building or how much you have invested for that is there important but more important is that uh, in spite of these uh, inputs what is the output how do they contribute to the society uh, uh, whether the students are coming um, with a, a better uh, the startups or lengthwise what is the output this is something and the output is uh, the output is uh, not only the academical thing they should be multitasking all of you have very beautifully uh, identified it because they should uh, they should be uh, this uh, tech savvies uh, they should have a uh, very clear uh, ideas on project management good communication skills uh, likewise they should be multitaskers multitaskers so the academical side is important but more important or equally important is that how they are able to put up with uh, a community how much they are socially accountable how much uh, the, uh, that is uh, whether they are able to work with the team how can they contribute all these things how can they manage a project are they critical thinking do they have a problem solving ability uh, whether they are having a good communication skill so these things are something very important so uh, together with the, of the academical knowledge these thing also is been considered important this thing is been considered important and it is this thing will make them go up in the y axis they make them more and more competent to face the life challenge uh, to uh, make uh, to uh, not only the life challenge to meet the challenges of their workspace as well as to lead a good a complete life to lead a complete life they should be a multitasker so the academic stream uh, or emphasizes on the academic stream am i audible am i audible uh, please uh, comment i think some uh, uh, chat has been uh, uh, yes, yes yes i think uh, uh, i have seen one or two chat is coming not audible uh, some uh, problem at your end please uh, check it up okay so this is a very beautiful this is the contemporary situations we want uh, we want the students uh, and not only that uh, uh, our the, 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 the person is a generation they are multitaskers and they are uh, they want challenging things and that will extract the potentialities we obviously in the higher education system we are uh, dealing with the is uh, generations and now i now i think we will be just uh, uh, giving some tips some tips about uh, the different components that we have uh, identified in the building block of outcome based education the four major thing that we have found in the outcome based education uh, that architecture is that vision and mission is there below that we had program educational objective program educational objective this is the only ob the term objective that we can find in an outcome based educational architecture so we have got a program educational objective we have got program outcomes program specific outcomes and course outcomes this will constitute the architecture of an outcome based education so let us identify it one by one yeah definitely we will be having an idea but let us uh, let us try to let us try to identify it so what is program educational objective so when you are formulating a curriculum or implementing an outcome based education the first thing that we have to do is that you have to find the answer to this question what should be the goal what should be the goal of this program or little more specifically if i say what the student should be capable of doing when they pass out of this program when they move out of the program when they come to the society what should be what they should be able to do what should be the goal of the program the answer to that question the answer to that question will contribute what the program educational objective so from where actually the outcome based education uh, is a philosophy uh, or a is an approach of education which is more inclined to the society industry and environment so definitely you have to 
So definitely you have to get the answer to this question from the stakeholders. Stakeholders in the sense, we have to get the response. We have to get the responses uh, from the stakeholders, from if it is a professional college, uh, uh, from the <clears throat> industry uh, to which the professional college is aligned. Uh, we have to get the uh, this feedback from the stakeholders, what they are expecting. So that will contribute uh, the program educational objective. So uh, these are the broad statement that focuses on what the students are expected to attain within first few years after completion of the program that is after completion of the program when they leave out of the program when they leave the college and when they go and to uh, to the society for living what they should be able to do so that question's answer is uh, uh, could be uh, summarized or could be comprehended as uh, the program and definitely why this five years because uh, the immediately after leaving the college the first few years the major influence of the individuals uh, is a graduate's uh, life the major influences will be the influence that he has got from the institution that's why the first few years and after about 10 to 15 years their life experiences and the multiple other uh, interventions uh, will contribute to the development so that is why immediately after leaving, what they should be able to take up. That answer, that question's answer is what the program educational objective. So this is a, a demi program educational objective that uh, I have just uh, written it for you. So this program educational objectives should be formulated from the institutional level institutional level so before developing a program the institution should find out what should be the program educational objectives obviously while we are putting up this ssr report and all these things has to be very specifically highlighted so uh, the program education i have just uh, take uh, written three program education objectives the first one if you can read the graduate the graduates will be that is uh, the graduates after passing that program the graduates will be able to demonstrate demonstrate what competency and leadership to become a professional employee and entrepreneur leading to a successful career or pursue higher education so this should be one of the important important objective of the program that is while completing after completing and passing out of the educational stream, they should be able to fix correctly into the a career. That is to which the program may be aligned, maybe a general stream, or whether they uh, go with this, uh, with a, uh, a startup, or whether they have to go uh, as an employee, or whether they develop as an uh, as an entrepreneur, or whether they develop as a professional, whatever it may be, they should fit into in, fit into that space exactly or whether they are going for a higher education. So that should be one of the important objectives. So what should be? I think uh, there's some uh, chat which is. Because uh, we, we can, uh, let us uh, first go through these uh, segments and then we will uh, have a more and more detailed discussions on that. The second one is that the graduate will be able to demonstrate the what is that the graduate will be able to demonstrate commitment towards uh, preservation of environment and sustainable development of the society sustainable development of the society so what does it mean the first thing is that the program should equip them for a career to find a space for a career to earn a livelihood or for higher education the second is that they should live in the society so they should be socially accountable they should have an environmental consciousness uh, uh, they should have uh, a, a very rapport with the society a responsible citizen all these things has to be important so he can uh, be equipped for a better social uh, life and the third one is that the graduate will pursue a lifelong learning in generating innovative solutions and practice uh, and practice using researches and complex problems solving skills. So these, uh, I, I have just uh, read one question is that how will you uh, evaluate uh, these things? The program educational objectives are not uh, evaluated 
while the students uh, leave. Objective means it is futuristic. So uh, we evaluate it because in an outcome-based education, we will take a survey from the alumni, the employers. Uh, the, likewise, this survey will give you feedback whether uh, these uh, uh, educational objectives are met. Because the very next day when the student leaves your institution, you will not be able to access whether he is performing well in a career. Definitely not. That is why within first few years, you have to keep on a rapport with the students, uh, make follow up with the students and get a survey off from the students. And the result of the survey will be an indicator of whether your uh, outcome, these uh, program educational objectives are going in the right way. So in an uh, outcome based educational topology, the uh, feedback, the survey from the these alumni, entrepreneurs or that all thing will decide whether this is happening. And if it is not happening, you have to improvise your curriculum. That's it. So uh, uh, somebody has uh, asked me a question. That's why I just uh, given you a little more detailing about that. The program educational objectives are not directly assessed while the students pass out. Objective is futuristic. It can be accessed only in a, a later span. That is why we are conducting indirect assessments, uh, the surveys like that. And uh, program outcomes, program outcomes. So first thing that you have uh, made is that you have uh, uh, very beautifully, uh, you have very beautifully uh, defined what should be the objective of this program. So in order to attain these objectives, what we should have? That is, we should equip them with the different competencies. Suppose if you want to make a student employable, you have to equip with some competencies. You have to equip with uh, communication skills. You have to equip uh, them with uh, different environment of problem solving skills. So you have to stuff them with the different attributes. We have to prepare the students. This is the something that you are giving or preparing the students for. So this is our, uh, this is our, uh, these, uh, the end, uh, the end outcome that you have to focus on. And so these outcomes will contribute to what? The program education objectives. So you, if you, the, the task of the, the formulation of uh, the outcome based education is to identify the program, uh, the program outcomes which help for uh, the accomplishment of the program educational objectives. So first we have identified what should be the program educational objectives. So in order to the, for, the, for the students for attainment of the program educational objectives, what are the competencies? What are the skills? What are the attitudes you need to generate in the students so that the program educational objectives are met? So these competencies, these attitudes, these skills that will support the program educational objectives is considered as program outcomes. So I think I made it clear. So from where did this program outcome come from? Definitely it will come from the program educational objectives because the program outcomes and the program specific outcomes are those competencies or the knowledges or the skills or the attitude that you try to make in the students for educational objectives. So definitely let us take the first one, program education objective. The first program education objective, uh, which uh, the demi objective, which I have listed in one of my slides is that after completing a program, program is uh, probably a BTEC or uh, uh, probably a, a BCA or a BBA, whatever is maybe the program. After completion, that is, the graduate will be able to demonstrate competency and leadership to become professional, employee, and entrepreneur, leading to a successful career or pursue higher education. So suppose if this is our objective. So what should be the competencies that you need? You expect your graduate. Suppose if uh, it is uh, an, a, a BBA program business uh, uh, that is a business administration program so what is the competencies that you want uh, the student uh, your uh, your student to attain while he leave you can uh, put it in chat box you can put it in chat box what is the competency that you need uh, for a student who are uh,
yeah managerial skill he needs a managerial skill so if you want to make him successful in his career you need a, a managerial skill should be there a leadership skill should be there uh, administrative skill should be there communication skill should be there now now i think it is clear from where did it come from program educational objective so what should be the program outcome and what should be the program specific outcome will be will be exactly from will be extracted from the program edu uh, educational objectives so this you have to equip the students with the, these competencies so that they will accomplish the program education objectives so so definitely uh, you have very beautifully said so the first important thing is that after setting the program educational objectives you have to you have to decide what are the program outcomes and program specific outcomes that you have to uh, you have to ensure in the students so that uh, they become successful and they will be able to live in accordance with the program education objectives so definitely now there are two terms program outcomes and program specific outcomes suppose in, in a college there will be different programs maybe different programs related to arts uh, different programs related to science uh, likewise uh, so uh, the common there there will be some attributes which will be common to all the or the which we need uh, uh, to be developed in every students so such a programs we can such competencies and skills we could consider as program the general competencies which has been uh, uh, which has been essential for the entire entire uh, college irrespective of the program could be considered as the program outcomes the generic the generic for example leadership quality communication skill uh, environmental uh, environmental uh, uh, this uh, accountability uh, or uh, this uh, uh, leadership quality these things are something which has been commonly needed for the uh, students for a better life so such things could be considered as what program program outcomes and program specific outcomes are those specific knowledge uh, attitude or competencies related to their subject so definitely definitely the program specific outcomes will be more or less related to their domain suppose if it, if it is commerce the program specific outcomes will be related to the commerce related domain if, suppose if it is uh, bsc mathematics the program specific outcomes will be related to the mathematical the domain knowledge so program specific outcomes will be related to the domain knowledge and program outcomes will be related to the common attributes which is essential for every 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 students okay so that is uh, uh, what is program outcomes so uh, as far as the uh, these uh, nac has uh, uh, they didn't uh, specify that these should be the program uh, outcomes because it has given freedom for the institutions to identify the program uh, outcomes which is uh, in line with the program educational objective that they have already fixed so they have given uh, the full freedom for the institutions to identify the program outcomes and these program outcomes are identified from these competencies like uh, the the attributes the graduate attributes in terms of competencies in terms of knowledge in terms of attitudes in terms of skills uh, so this could be identified by uh, the institutions and the ugc has given uh, has given a list a list of uh, program uh, uh, attributes that is the graduate attributes actually the program outcomes are nothing but the a statement uh, which has been developed from these attributes tomorrow we will be writing our a program a verbal statement of the program outcomes from these attributes so now for the uh, for the time being we will say that these are the program outcomes and they will be uh, explicitly written in the form of a statement uh, tomorrow we will be writing on that so these are the different the graduate attributes or the program uh, attributes which has been suggested from by the ugc which will be developed as a program outcomes so the disciplinary knowledge the communication skill the critical thinking the problem solving analytical reasoning uh, research related skills uh, uh, cooperative and teamwork scientific these are the general attributes that the students uh, uh, should uh, develop and if you are considering the engineering uh, colleges the nba has very uh, explicitly given a set of uh, the program outcomes uh, uh, that is the 12 program outcomes where the first five is been related to the technical capability 
the competencies related to the technical competencies and uh, the uh, the last seven related to the the integrated capabilities so uh, the engineering knowledge that is the that is the knowledge part the problem solving ability the designing uh, uh, and development of the solutions these are for the uh, because this is nothing but which has been uh, adopted by this has been adopted from the Washington Accord because, as we know that the India has become a member of the Washington Accord uh, uh, in uh, in, to, in 2014. Uh, so, while uh, being uh, the advantages of being a member of the Washington Accord is that the graduates, the students who are graduating from the Tier One institutions of these colleges can go anywhere. Uh, in these uh, uh, these Washington the, these nations who has been uh, signed the accord without any uh, specific uh, without any uh, that is uh, the specific uh, um, uh, that is uh, recognition of the uh, these courses or nothing like that. So they have uh, this is a boon for the students who are studying in the Taiwan colleges. They have got an international mobility. They can study anywhere. Uh, um, uh, you know, without any uh, additional requirements or to get uh, placement from this. So, uh, so these, uh, the Washington Accord has uh, explicitly said that uh, they have to adopt uh, uh, these uh, uh, outcome-based education and for the technical uh, stream, the, uh, these outcomes uh, should be standardized and they have to develop the curriculum on the basis of these outcomes so that the students can have an international mobility among those nations of uh, which has been which has been the members of the washington Accord. so uh not going into detail about that so i think you have got a clarity on the structure the program educational objectives and we uh, in order for the attainment of the program educational objectives we have to identify the best uh, the best uh, uh, competencies which will uh, help the students for the attainment of the program educational objectives. So, putting it in the form of a statement, the program outcomes and program specific outcomes. This refers to the knowledge, skill, and attitude. Do you remember this? When we have discussed about the Bloom's taxonomy, the cognitive development, the cognitive domain, knowledge skill psychomotor domain and attitude so they refers to the knowledge skill and attitude which could be considered as the pillars of our education knowledge skill and attitude so they refers to the knowledge skill and attitude that is the graduate attributes that the student should have at the end of the program so by completing the program uh, what are the knowledge the skill and attitude the student should gain so that they become successful with respect to the program educational objective. So with respect to the program educational objective, what are the knowledge, what are the skills, and what are the attitudes the, the student should gain? That should be fixed first. And for uh, that end point, we have to design. For gaining this, what should be the subjects, or what should be the courses that should be added for the attainment of this? That is how the, we have to uh, formulate it. And program specific outcome means the program specific outcome describe what the graduates of a specific program will be able to do. So this is, as I have mentioned earlier, these are the common general attribute that the that the student should gain, and these are the something which is related to the specific program. If it is a commerce student or if it is a management student, it will be related to the management domain. If it is a science student. It will be related to the science domain. If it is a literature student, it will be related to the literature domain. What are the what are the uh, these uh, competencies they have to uh, uh, they have to show in their domain and program out? This is what are the common uh, competencies they have to display. And now I think uh, if you are making a uh, that is uh, an uh, a plan that is uh, if you are customizing. The teaching learning environment according to the outcome based education the assessment is not uh, uh, that is will be made in terms of the set of competencies so these are the program this these are the end these will be the uh, the end attainment calculation that we have to make because in the traditional in the traditional uh, system of uh, examination the assessment will be made in terms of the assessment will be made in terms of the marks that the students 
gain with respect to the subject or the grade that the students make with respect to the subject. That was the traditional system. That is, that is there, but for outcome based education, in addition to the marks that they gain for the subject, we have to, we have to make assessment in terms of how much that they are attained with respect to the different, the different program outcomes and program specific outcomes. So the final assessment will be made in terms of, it may, will be made in terms of the competencies also. So the subject mark is there in addition to that, in addition to that, how much, how much they have attained with respect to the different uh, competencies or program outcomes or program specific outcomes that you selected for the program. That is the difference. So I think now if you are just thinking about the first slide that I have shown you, the x-axis, x-axis is the, is the academic attainment, which means the marks that the students gained in the, marks that the students gained in each subject, that is the x-axis. And the outcome-based education has projected a y-axis, what they are capable of doing what they are capable of doing that is what is their level of communication skill what is their level of critical thinking what is the level of problem solving what is the level of analytical reasoning a new access now i think the concept is clear because before in the traditional system we are focusing on the academical line the marks but in outcome based education we are assessing the students uh, on the basis of the competencies or the competencies these competencies are nothing but the our the po's and poso's that we have fixed for the program so that will be assessed and uh, but uh, this will be the most ideal thing if you are able to provide a, a, a chart like this this will act as a uh, this will act as a, a profile for the students suppose if you are uh, going for an interview suppose the students are going for an interview the students will be preparing a profile uh, highlighting the comp their competencies and skills but if you are a capable of giving a template like this this is an authentic profile it has got both positive as well as at the same time it will uh, it will bounce back if this assessment is not correctly done suppose if you are giving a communication skill this assessment is been made in a, a scale of 0 to 3 so out of 3 disciplinary knowledge is 2.3 yeah out of out from zero means no zero one two three that is a four point scale four point scale uh, the maximum that could attain is three the disciplinary knowledge two point three is okay it is good the communication skill one point eight is only is only a moderate level suppose if you are giving a communication skill uh, two point seven so that will be fine and if the employer finds that this person who, whom you have rated 2.7 for the communication scale, they are not been able to uh, present something or not able to draft a letter, then definitely that will bounce back and say that your evaluation system is, is not appropriate. So this is uh, uh, so if you are able to present, uh, if you are able to present a scorecard with respect to the attainment in different, uh, uh, together with that of the academic attainment, uh, what is the level of attainment with respect to their uh, different uh, uh, competencies? These are nothing but the POs that you have selected. Uh, that will be the most ideal. But the thing is that we will be uh, at the at the first level. We are not uh, giving a detailed. We are not giving a. A detailed assessment like this, we are just we are just giving whether the students have attained the target. So we'll be fixing if you are fixing a target like if I'm fixing a target two, isn't it? Then if they have attained the target two, okay, they have attained. If they are not, uh, if they are not attained the target, then according to the outcome based education, you have to arrange some remedial teaching program so that the students uh, the target is met. Because the third, the third uh, uh, principle of the outcome-based education is that everybody could learn. So that outcome-based education wants the entire students, entire students to uh, complete the minimum level of these uh, attainment in these uh, uh, level. Okay. So what I would like to uh, bring to your uh, uh, knowledge is that uh, that is we the outcome-based education is assessing the students not only in terms of the subject marks but also in terms of the in terms of the competencies which you showcased in the as program outcomes and program specific outcomes.
and what is program outcome? So the, the program, uh, what is a course outcome? Sorry, the program outcome, we have already defined that what the students should be able to know and do. That is the three pillars. What the students, the three pillars are knowledge, skill, and attitude the students should possess on completion of the program. And with respect to each course, you can, you should fix that. Suppose uh, if the first semester has got six papers, that means you are having six courses. So before starting the course, you have to identify what, what should be the course outcome. Course outcome means what the students should be able to know and capable of doing after completion of this particular paper. That has to be answered first. That is the output. And from that, you have to decide uh, whether you have to give a project or whether you have to give an assignment or whether you have to give a field trip or whether you have to uh, develop uh, uh, some uh, some different activities, some innovative practices. What all things uh, you have to accommodate uh, into your teaching learning environment so that the final end, end point is met. So a course outcome is the answer to the question. What should be the, what the student should be able to uh, know and do? Answer to this question. And what the students should be able to know and do on completion of the paper that you teach. The disciplinary knowledge 2.3 is okay. It is good. The communication skill 1.8 is only is only a moderate level. Suppose if you are giving a communication skill uh, 2.7, so that will be fine. And if the employer finds that this person who, whom you have rated 2.7 for the communication scale, they are not been able to uh, present a something or not able to draft a letter, then definitely that will bounce back and say that your evaluation system is, is not uh, appropriate. So this is, uh, uh, so if you are able to present, uh, if you are able to present a scorecard with respect to the attainment in different, uh, uh, together with that of the academic attainment, uh, what is the level of attainment with respect to the uh, different uh, uh, competencies? These are nothing but the POs that you selected. Uh, that will be the most ideal. But the thing is that we will be uh, at the, at the first level, we are not uh, giving a detailed, we are not giving a, a detailed assessment like this we are just we are just giving whether the students have attained the target so we will be fixing if you are fixing a target like if i'm fixing a target two isn't it then if they have attained the target two okay they have attained if they are not uh, if they are not attained the target then according to the outcome based education you have to arrange some remedial teaching program so that the students uh, the target is met because the third the third uh, uh, principle of the outcome based education is that everybody could learn so that outcome based education wants the entire students entire students to uh, complete the minimum level of these uh, attainment in these uh, uh, level okay so what i would like to uh, bring to your uh, uh, knowledge is that uh, that is we the outcome based education is assessing the students not only in terms of the subject marks but also in terms of the in terms of the competencies which you showcased in the as program outcomes and program specific outcomes and what is program outcome so the, the program uh, what is a course outcome sorry the program outcome we have already defined that what the students should be able to know and do that is the three pillars what the student the three pillars are knowledge skill and attitude the student should possess on completion of the program and with respect to each course you can you should fix that suppose uh, if the first semester has got six papers that means you are having six courses so before starting the course you have to identify what what should be the course outcome course outcome means what the students should be able to know and capable of doing after completion of this particular paper that has to be answered first. That is the output. And from that, you have to decide uh, whether you have to give a project or whether you have to give an assignment or whether you have to give a field trip or whether you have to uh, develop uh, uh, some, uh, some different activities, some innovative practices. What all things uh, you have to accommodate uh, into your teaching learning environment so that the final end, end point is met. So a course outcome is the answer to the question. What should be the, what the student should be able to uh, know and do. Answer to this question. And what the student 
should be able to know and do on completion of the paper that you're teaching. Maybe an introduction to uh, computer science or maybe an operational research. Uh, the paper is maybe an operational research. So. Hello, Sunil, sir. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, you have gone muted. Can you unmute yourself? Sunil, sir, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, now we can. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry for the. Uh, uh, can you see the screen now? Yes. So, uh, so we are at this. Uh, I think this is okay. Yes, sir, you can proceed. Uh, okay, okay. So, uh, we were discussing on the course outcome. We were discussing on the course outcome. So, uh, with respect to the course outcome, uh, what we have to do is that what you have to do is that you have to just answer a question. What should be the uh, what the student should be able to know and what the student should be able to do after completion of this paper, introduction to computer or uh, or uh, this uh, whatever paper that you are handling. So that answer to that question will give you the course outcome. And what is your focus is that. You want to make all the students attain that level. So what are the different activities which has been appropriate? That is the curriculum. You have to formulate the curriculum according to these outcomes. That is what uh, this uh, outcome based education focuses on. So the first important thing for a teacher is that first important thing for a teacher is that the role of the teacher in this uh, formulation. Sir, sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Can you make it full screen present mode? Uh, presentation mode. Okay. Okay. I think uh, we have reached. Okay, so the role of teacher at uh, this point of time. Okay, I think it is okay now. Uh, my screen and uh, okay, 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 so, okay. Uh, sorry for uh, some interruptions. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, now uh, the role of the teacher at this point of time is that they have to identify the course outcome first. The program educational objective is the, uh, the identification of the program educational objective is the duty of the management. The program outcomes and program specific outcomes will be for program outcomes will be formulated for the entire colleges and program specific outcomes will be uh, departmental wise. And what every teacher should uh, uh, do is that they have to first identify what should be the program, the course outcome. That's the first thing that you have to identify. So, when we identify the course outcomes correctly, that brings clarity to the entire process. After completing of my course, the student should be able to know this and the student should be able to uh, do such and such things. Okay, I will be listing it out. That is my, that is my course outcome. Every teacher uh, should be able to identify. So in formulation of an outcome based education, the first step for every teacher is to identify the best uh, course outcome and write it in an explicit uh, and a concise and precise manner. That's one thing very, very, very important for teach. So now I'm giving you a, a magical formula for writing a course outcome. So directly I am not going into a course outcome. I am just first we will take a small learning learning part because an outcome based education. The first thing is that even if you go to a class for teaching some a small topic, First thing you have to identify is that after teaching this topic, what the student should be able to do. That should be identified first. And that topic is the learning outcome of that particular class. And for the attainment of the particular learning outcome, what activity you have to, what activity you have to generate. Your role there is, your role there is to facilitate an environment where the students are actively. That is the, 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 the roles are redefined. We are coming into a new normal like that. 
the national policy also focuses on that students engagement lot of autonomy has been provided to the students you know uh, will be know, you know about the academic credit bank uh, because lot of autonomy is given to the institutions uh, for, to the teachers as well as now to the students the students can able to uh, progress according to their own pace uh, from different institutions uh, they can opt uh, the courses from different uh, institutions uh, like that so I, i'm not going into that uh, uh, at this point of time so writing a learning outcome is that suppose if you want to teach a uh, some topic i want to teach some demo at, at content on democracy dem content on democracy what should be the learning outcome for that so any learning outcome should have basically two components two components that is the students are not passive they should be active that is why the bloom's taxonomy is first form as uh, was in the noun form has been changed into the verb form verb form remembering understanding analyzing evaluating isn't it evaluating then creating work form so and for a learning outcome should have got two component one is an action verb and here to identify the action verb what is the level of the topic that you are teaching whether it is at a basic level a conceptual level whether you want to make the students uh, uh, perform an application level learning or whether you want them to take the students to a analytical level learning or you want to take the students even more what should be the level of experiences that you you are expecting from the students uh, in that particular class that will be decided that will that will be decided by the verb verb if you are selecting a verb from an application level you have to take the student to that height or if you are taking a level a verb from a second level you have to take it the students to that level so the this is the significance of this is the significance of what this is the significance of what the bloom's taxonomy that we have learned because i've told that the bloom's taxonomy is just like a skeleton for the ob it is essential it gives a shape to the ob so action verb and what learning statement learning statement is that the content that you're teaching i'm going to teach democracy about democracy so on completion of this topic the student should be able to explain the explain the different principles of democracy so i am just uh, focusing at a conceptual level of on teaching this democracy the student should be able to explain the different principles of democracy that's an outcome so so what was that explain was the action verb the principles of democracy is the learning statement together together if you club together you will get an outcome on completion of my class the students i focusing not myself i am focusing on the students should be able to explain the major principles of democracy the major principles of democracy learning statement should be able to explain from where did this explain come from bloom's taxonomy second understanding level the students understood then the students should be able to compare the system of uh, the democracy of uh, two nations higher level higher level okay so that is what that is how you have to write so this is a, uh, this is a, a, an outcome which uh, i have written from the area that i am teaching uh, optimization technique optimization technique that is uh, operational research that is on completion of the topic what is the what is the uh, topic that i am teaching the learning statement optimization technique so i am teaching them i want the student to reach where appraise appraise is a very higher level appraise comes where appraise comes where at a at a higher level at a higher order that is uh, about analytical and uh, about an analytical level as well as an evaluation level it comes there analytical and evaluation level i want to take the student to that height so on completion of my on completion of my class the evaluation level above analytical evaluation level on completion of the student uh, by class the student should be able to appraise what the effectiveness of optimization technique the learning statement i have also set a context where in industry or optimization technique in agriculture optimization technique uh, where in industry so i think now it is clear
So here you can club an action verb and a learning statement. You can clip appraise the effectiveness of optimization technique. You can stop it here. If you want to specify the context, you can add delimited to the industry. Decide level of mastery that you are expecting. And what is outcome? Outcome is that what the student should be able to do. So both are of the same genesis. So an outcome will be a glorified question. That is why in the previous day, we were been working up with the Bloom's taxonomy questions because these questions will be uh, to a greater extent uh, a support for formulation of an outcome. So th that is what, and I would like to put uh, to your notice that the speciality of an outcome is that the outcome should bring clarity. That is the outcome should be measurable and observable. And there is a big contradiction uh, regarding the usage of understand. You can use understand at uh, uh, peer, this program level and even course level. But when you are writing a learning outcome, learning outcome, it should be presented in an observable format. Because understand is a verb. 100% is a verb, but you will not be able to see whether the students have understood. It is not observable. In order to see, we have to identify another verb below that. If the students explain, isn't it? If the students explain, then it is clear. So see, these verbs are, are little vague. So if there is no alternative, you can use. I can say it is only, you can just read good practice. I don't say that it is wrong. I would say that it is a good practice to use the for is is not to use these following verbs because they are they are not that is it do not bring clarity to what the students are capable of doing so what the students are capable of doing if they understand that should be pinpointed they should be able to explain they should be able to describe they should be able to classify that makes it a little more clear so uh, while writing an outcome it is always a good practice to make the outcome clear because the first uh, principle of outcome based education is clarity of focus clarity should be there so what the student should be able to do because if i say understand i not be able to observe whether the student uh, student is understood or not so i would make little more clear if you if he understands that what he has been able to do i want to pinpoint that that makes an outcome especially at the lower level that is those outcomes that you are directly assessing it, assessing it, that should be made a little more clear. So it will be a better practice. But if you don't get an appropriate, appropriate pinpointed verb, you, you may, I can say you may use this. Especially the, the, this is a, a, a verb which has been highly uh, debated and uh, uh, controversies uh, are there uh, in the, its usage. But it is a good practice because uh, if I want to say understand, I want to identify some of the specification uh, what makes it understand. Okay. So that will be a little better. So this, uh, if you are able to uh, use a uh, uh, little more specific verbs, the outcomes are something which is made clarity. That is bringing objective. If you are writing an objective, there is no need for much clarity. If you are writing an outcome, it should be precise, concise, observable, measurable. So just a small comparison. Uh, if I say that the students will understand democracy, understand democracy, I will not be able to under, I will not be able to identify whether they understood democracy. If I say that the students will be able to describe the major theories of democracy, this is the specification that I am expecting from the students. So to make, uh, to make them, if I want to assess the, if I, I use this, it needs a little more clarity what the students are capable of doing if they understood. So if I'm writing, if the students are able to describe the major theories, okay, that's fine. So this will be a great, uh, good outcome. I did, if I write this, this, this uh, uh, how, lack of clarity but i don't say that it is uh, wrong uh, but it is better to use this then the students will appreciate uh, the art form it is better uh, appreciate that is a, it's a lack of clarity so what is that identifies the characteristics of art forms uh, with that of others or the student you can have better uh, verbs which uh, uh, specify pinpoints of what they are capable of doing the students will learn learn 
that also is me so you can make it a little more clear that x by using books that is why we have supplied a, a set of books we have supplied a set of verbs uh, for formulation of outcomes that verbs will help you to identify which is the appropriate verb that suit your learning content and the level so that is the importance of bloom's taxonomy okay and uh, the quality check of a good outcome quality check that is uh, first check is that are they written using action verb are they written using action verb let me uh, that is let me go to the padlet are they uh, written using action verbs because here principles of business management is is there an action verb isn't it so there should be an action verb there should be an action verb what is probable error or business statistics there is no action verb so there should be a explicitly here analyze there is an action verb isn't it analyze there is an action verb so there, if i write uh, financial management what well, it is no clarity there there should be an action verb so they should be written are they written there is whether there is an action verb that suits that content then does the language yeah. describes the student target rather than teaching oh, yeah, yeah. that is something important because the outcome based education is student centric so everything should be written from the point of the student the student if i say objective my objective is this that is my objective teacher's point of view if i say the student the student should be capable of doing so when you write this on completion of this the students will be capable of that means you are view of uh, uh, putting everything from the student's point of view and do the outcome clearly describe the abilities knowledge and value of the student of that course that means whether the outcome is in line with the learning statement whether the outcome depict the learning statement verb should be there learning should be there and whether they are uh, presented from the point of view of the student these are the three and the fourth one is it possible to collect accurate and reliable data for uh, outcome that is whether you can set an indicator for the outcome it can be a, a, a that, that is a, uh, that is uh, it can be a test or it can be um, some activity that you give so that you understand whether the student has attained that outcome so whether you can identify whether you can identify an assessment tool whether you can identify an indicator or assessment tool for you to identify or measure whether the students have attained that outcome so whether you are able to identify some uh, assessment tools with respect to that outcome so if it is okay if these four qualities uh, met then you can say that your outcome is a good outcome so four quality check action verb the point of view of the students return from the point of view of the student third whether the learning statement that is it the knowledge the three the three pillars knowledge value and uh, the abilities uh, are there so that is uh, whether the learning statement it is in par with the learning statement and whether you will be able to identify a measuring device to measure okay then it is a good outcome and some sample outcomes uh, uh, is there you have given a lot of outcomes uh, uh, in the padlet uh, 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 so uh, these are some of the uh, some sample outcomes okay that is on completion of the this is something common on completion of the topic the student should be able to apply the law of physics to compute different types of responses that is law of physics means hooke's law uh, there is, uh, apply hooke's law to compute the different types of responses in the given material okay it's a uh, it's a sample outcome analyze the structural element of different force system to compute the design parameter explain the various principles of organization select advertisement and interpret its uh, advertising objectives appraise the effectiveness optimization technique in the industry uh, the uh, outcome which i have uh, presented in my uh, previous slide analyze the range of variability of objective function and constraints using sensitivity analysis so just uh, a sample uh, set of questions uh, sample set of uh, outcomes that are used so now uh, uh, you uh,